going to talk about some science and to be specific today we are going to talk about your river okay your river and see what it is and from previous lesson or previously we introduced homeostasis <coughs> where we talked about the need for homeostasis and I believe we all appreciate that we need to have homeostasis then from the need we talked about the tissue fluid and formation of the tissue fluid then from there we talked about the feedback mechanisms where we talked about the positive and the negative feedback mechanism then from there we talked about how glucose is regulated in our bodies and all videos are there by them you can go watch them over and over again make summaries so that everything becomes part of them so today let's talk about the liver as the main body organ responsible for homeostasis and before we talk about how the liver is responsible for homeostasis, we need to have some basic, basic understanding of the structure of the liver. Now we all know that we all have the liver and the liver is the largest internal organ and made up kind of like this. And yeah, it's the largest internal organ, and the skin is the most stretched organ. You all know that. And basing on that, basing on its structure, it is actually the organ with the largest number of functions. The functions performed by your liver, there are so, so, so many, so, so many, that you must appreciate that you must really appreciate that <clears throat> so the river is made up of numerous tight tightly packed cells called hepatocytes these river cells they are called hepatocytes okay and there are very many these river cells they are hepatocytes and they are tightly packed and they are arranged in the form of cylindrical lobes. Okay, these pack, these tightly packed cells are arranged in cylindrical lobes. Okay, and actually, these lobes are hexagonal. If you are to study the anatomy of the liver, they are hexagonal with one central vein and. <coughs> six triads at each corner so they are hexagon okay if you know a hexagon okay so they do surround okay they do surround this river then with this so if you are to observe if you are to cut and you observe from the surface so this is what we shall see one central vein and it's large which is this one okay then with six okay peripheral vessels with one hepatic vein another hepatic artery and then the bile duct the, so collectively since there are two of them there are three of them and they are referred to as triads so that's the basic structure of the liver. So these hepatocytes are arranged in those cylindrical lobes. Okay? Cylindrical lobes. To form. And actually, these cylindrical lobes are the functional unit of the liver, if you are to be specific. They are the functional unit of the liver. That's where all these functions are going to take place. Now, if you are to cons check, if you are to study each hepatocyte, basing on the different functions of the liver, as we are going to see the functions, 
they have very many and prominent Golgi bodies, the hepatocytes. They have rhizosomes. They have endoplasmic retina and numerous mitochondria. So why should you have all this? It's because of the functions, the, 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 the vital functions that are performed by the liver. You must have the Golgi body, the rhizosome, mitochondria. Because remember, you have a lot of respiration in the liver so that you can maintain, for instance, body temperature. And how is that maintained? By respiration. So you therefore must have numerous or very many mitochondria that will carry out, that will carry out respiration. And you know that it's the liver that is responsible for temporary storage of glycogen, for instance. So you must have numerous glycogen granules. Now each rope, the cylindrical robes that we've been talking about, each robe is composed of vertical plates that are tightly packed or that are made up of closely packed hepatocytes and they do radiate from the center to the periphery of the rope. So if this is your center of one row, then you have these tightly packed hepatocytes, these cells of ours, okay? And they do radiate from the center to the periphery of the rope. And that's the one, one functional unit of the liver. The whole of it is an organ and the organ is big enough but it has the functional the small units that actually do carry out these 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 functions in between the robes are branches of hepatic portal vein known as interrobular vessels as you can see so if this is the portal vein they are the the the, the portal vein obviously you know let me talk about the hepatic portal vein. It is a vein which drains the stomach. And it will be rich in nutrients. And these nutrients must be supplied, must be taken to the liver before they are distributed to the entire body. Why the liver? Because in the stomach, you just eat anything and in any amount. So, the way anything cannot just be released into your internal environment. So they are taken to the river to be, you know, the river, the river is the one which controls all the concentration of these solids and nutrients. So therefore, the hepatic portal vein, it is going to branch into small portal veins that these portal veins each will supply these robes. And the portal veins also, they would branch into numerous small capillaries which will pour directly into the sinusoids so that exchange occurs. Ah, we are going to see, we are going to see. Okay? So those are the interrobular vessels that are found where between these ropes. And they are the ones which actually supply these robes with blood that is rich in nutrients, blood that is rich in oxygen, and they all collectively drain into one large vessel. Now, as we can all see, you also have the bile duct. Now, as blood is flowing from the periphery to, to the central vein, as you can see, Fruit bile is going to flow in the reverse order and all of it is going to collect in the bile duct and it is taken to the gall bladder where it is temporarily stored until when the need to be released occurs and you release the bile into the duodenum. But before that, it will all collect up into the, from these hepatocytes into the bile duct. So, at the center of each rope, here, 
it is one central vein okay one central vein which will correct now it is correcting you can see it is correcting blood that has been filtered and blood that is deoxygenated and it will correct up into one hepatic vein that will draw its blood into inferior vena cava so that you maintain normal saturation so if this is your orb these are the <coughs> sinusoids these open cavities these open spaces and then this is your hepatic vein then this is your hepatic artery and your bile duct so these they will pour into these open spaces called sinusoids and as blood is flowing through these sinusoids these open cavities there will be exchange these hepatocytes they will receive the cells sorry they will receive the nutrients okay so they do connect to small vessels known as the sinusoids and then you have the interobular vessels like how we said between the lobes you have the vessels that run through these different lobes and these vessels they are the ones which connect and correct blood from all the lobes into one large central vein which will correct into the hepatic vein and the pour blood out so attached to the surface are hepatocytes these very cells these very cells and then you also have the kupfer cells and these kupfer cells they are phagocytic cells that are found within the liver you can have a look at this so within these sinusoids within these open cavities you have those phagocytic cells the kupfer cells now being phagocytic means they can engulf okay any incoming microbe because as blood is flowing you have different microbes different microorganisms that are harmful that might cause harm to the liver and to the entire body so you know that the liver is one of the function is the liver performs metabolic functions and also the immunological functions so these group cells they are responsible for engulfing such microbes that might be taken up that might be flowing with this blood that is flowing through these sinusoids and so you eliminate them then lining these sinusoids it is an endothelial lining or the endothelial membrane to maintain that smooth flow okay of blood throughout the entire river no the entire robula of the river then you have within these kupfer cells there are small cavities there are small spaces okay called canaliculi and there are these canaliculi that will keep correcting the bile that is formed by these kupfer cells sorry by these hepatocytes until when the whole bile is connected up in one large bile duct or in a bile duct which is transported to the core blood so this can actually they do drain the bile from the hepatocytes into the bile duct or a branch of the bile duct and it all connects up in the gall bladder to be released where need arises so basically that's the basic structure of the river okay the basic structure of the river in case there are questions feel free guys to reach the inbox or to unmute and ask it is all good